The story opens up to a room of girls discussing how their school is haunted by ghosts when there's a knock on the door. It's the beauty Rika Ri who goes on to tell of the sleep as it is lights out. After she walks through the halls ensuring everyone has gone to bed, she goes on to the balcony of her room. There she thinks of Suijin, who in her words protects the school. At the stroke of midnight, the moo turns red and a mausoleum rises from the ground as well as undeads who want the treasure in it. Huh. Keep watching. As they make their way towards the mausoleum, we see Suigen and his cat who ward them off from the mausoleum. At first sight, you would think how he would take about a million undead down but he does. Maybe plot armor. Well, as fights the undead, he has a flashback to one year ago when he met Reiku for the first time. In the middle of a fight, it all started on a fateful day when he carried his computer to play games beside a swimming pool. Not a laptop now, a full-fledged computer you know with a monitor, CPU, and what have you. As he just wins the game, he's met by three guys who ask him about a pink-haired girl, but Suyin is too wrapped in his game to have noticed any girl. Infuriated by his lack of observance as a lifeguard slash pool cleaner and the fact that Suyin couldn't swim, they then picked up his cat, Wan Koi, and threw it into the pool for him to clean. In fear of his cat drowning, Suijin quickly jumped into the water to save his cat. Not a well-thought move I'd say, because he drowned. Later on he wakes up on the side of the pool after everyone has gone home, to his cat and a guy, Ranshu. Ranshu was a very dreamy guy who girls just fall in love with. But it wasn't Ranshu who saved him, he was already saved before Ranshu got there. He was saved by Riku Rii, the sole daughter of the vice president of God Grave Tech Company, Riku Yuki. She was sought after by many, and she was also the smartest girl in school. After all these qualities you'd think Suijin would know her, but he didn't. As he brushed the floor of the pool he began to think of her and how she rescued him, knowing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, yea, he started blushing. Back to the present. As he fights the undead, they see they're on the losing end. So they begin to combine themselves to form very large monsters. They then surround Suijin, who immediately summons a thousand graves. And it's not like regular coffins as you might be thinking, these graves are big black crosses. As they come out of the ground, he stands on top of one while the rest of them take out the undead. You'd think it would've been enough to take out the undeads but they're still in multitude around him. Jumping off the cross to fight them, he thinks to himself that someday he'll get to see Riku again. This episode opens with the narration of Rie who opens her eyes after a deep slumber to see a boy with an uneasy expression on his face, it's Suijin. At the school, we see a couple comprising the dynamic duo of a loud girl and a shy guy. They're at the cemetery adjacent to the school and having a date. Talk about a creepy location, right? Well, that's what the boy's saying too, but the girl doesn't mind because she feels it's a great spot and no one knows about it. As she pushes him to the bench to make a move on him, they turn to see a tall silhouette of what looks like a man's but it has four shining red eyes and a blazing red scarf. While they freeze in shock, it says hello. Hearing this, they jump up and run away. After they've taken off, we see that the silhouette is Suijin who came to clean, and Wan Koi on his shoulder. After cleaning the mess the couple made, he then goes to play his game which had already been set up close to the girls' hostel. He taps their electricity to play the game. Putting on his headset and pressing the on button, his computer comes on to reveal the screen which reads, Welcome to Dungeon Century. In the game, they show a level 99 dragon defeated by his character using a stick. Or maybe the stick meant more in a game. Well, describing his character, we'd say it is a small boy wearing a helmet with horns, a singlet, briefs, and of course, a red scarf around his neck. After defeating this great dragon, the other characters of the game stand in astonishment at such a feat that they witnessed. While they stand on, a man comes from among their midst and introduces him as Gwyn, a lone wolf who doesn't utter a word, and the meister who defeats his enemies with the lowest grade equipment. Hyped up by the intro and his level up to level 181, Suigen decides to take on another quest. But as he is about to, he hears a shout of a girl calling out for help. He sees a pink-haired girl who's chased by a monstrous mushroom and her attacks have no effects on it. As the mushroom is about to catch up to her, Suigen then uses Gwen to finish the mushroom off in one fell swoop. After taking down the monster, she walks up to him and thanks him for saving her. She also goes on to introduce herself as Ray, a level 11 player, but as she asked him for his name, his computer shuts off. What a bummer. Not wanting this setback to stop him, he goes on to climb a lamppost where his computer is connected to resolve the issue. Coincidentally, Ray is opening her windows as she is telling her roommate, Maki, about the character that saved her in the game. As she looks outside, she pauses when her eyes lock with Suigen who's on a lamppost directly facing her room. 
While Sujin's lost for words, he's soon met in the face by a flying pillow that knocks him off of the lamppost he is on. It was her Mackie who hurled it at him while accusing him of being a perv, a peeping Tom, and a lecher. The very next day, we see Sujin cleaning the windows of the high school building while reminiscing about how he was treated like a peeping Tom. His reminiscing is interrupted when he sees Ri who is playing the game and her friend sitting on a bench nearby. Leaving what he is doing, Sujin leans in to look at her as she discusses with Maki her love for the game that her father made. We also see from her screen that she is Rei, but did Sujin see it? Hmm. Well, his staring is soon interrupted by Ran Xiao who comes up from a window beside him and speaks about Sujin's crush. He goes on to tell Sujin that the boys in the school consider her an idol and his falling in love with her will only leave him hurt. As he said this we see the trio from earlier, hounding Ri and Maka dragging her to leave where the boys are. Back in the boys' dorm later, we see Sweden drinking juice lazily from a straw while playing his game. He receives a friend request, and as he opens it, he sees it's from Ray. Seeing this, he spits the drink from his mouth in shock, as she asked him to be her friend after thanking him for saving her previously. He just took a big W at that point. For the next several months, things were going well, until Ray asked to meet Gwyn in real life. The problem isn't the request, but what Sweden thought Ray would think of him when she saw who he was. The thought plagued him for a while as he kept on thinking what the richest girl in school would think of a poor student who has no family and does a lot of part-time jobs. He just wants to relish the time they spend in the game. Well, that thought is put to halt when he sees that the game is to be discontinued in a few days. How many tragedies can a guy take? Seeing the game is to be discontinued, Sweden doesn't take the news well as it affects him a lot. We see him staggering as he walks in the school and even goes on to fall off to the bushes nearby as he mutters, the world is ending. A bit of an exaggeration though but I'm sure we can all understand where he's coming from. Meanwhile, as he is caught in a haze, we see Ray with her father in his office. He's giving her a raft box which he tells her is a precaution in case anything happens. Ray starts worrying about what he's saying but he goes on to comfort her that it's just a precaution and nothing more. He then continues to tell her that the new game coming out as a replacement for Dungeon Century will be epic as it will be a reality that surpasses reality. A game that will change the world. He also shares her plight as she had just found a partner whom she liked in the game. On hearing this, she is embarrassed as it turns out that he father has been monitoring her in the game. Seeing her reaction, he tells her that he was just worried about her, that's why he checked. Back to our boy, Suigen, we see him face down looking at the water as he is thinking of Ray. This wouldn't have been a weird scene if he wasn't doing it in the center of the class area with students passing by and avoiding him. Rancho with his girlfriend then spots Suigen and goes over to comfort him. He then tells Suijin that even though the game is ending, all he has to do is get closer to her in the real world. Suijin quickly replies that she only knows him in the game. As Rancho's girl asks him about his one-sided love, he then stands up and continues staggeringly walking away. As he is walking, he's passed by Ri's father's car, which drives past him, but as the car passes him, Yuki, Ri's father is looking at him from the side mirror. Strange, right? At night, Rhea logs onto the game once more even against the warnings of Maki who tells her that it's bad for her skin to stay up late. In the game, she's in the pub where other characters discuss the closing of the game as they fill themselves with booze. She sits at the bar, with the bartender who quietly cleans the cups. She is waiting for Gwyn to come and meet her there. While she waits, she hears from one of the gamers about an item, the evening song flower which can grant a player any single wish they ask for. After waiting for a long time, she begins to wonder if Gwyn will show up. As she ponders this, we see Sweden park his bicycle and set up to play a game at his usual spot by the lamppost. As he logs into the game, he begins to think of how they won't be able to play the game together anymore. Entering the game, he sees Ray on a flowery hill who has been waiting for him, and when she sees him, she goes to him and happily drags him by the hand and runs into the field of flowers with him. Sweden then starts to downplay his role in her life as a game buddy among others in Dungeon Century being a game among others. Rain then starts falling in the game world so Gwyn and Ray camp under a big tree which is just a big leaf. I don't know. Well, as they can't, Ray told Gwyn about her plan to find the evening sunflower. Immediately without thinking, Gwyn offers to help her. In the town at the God Grave Tech Company, GGTC, where a multitude of people are gathered, they announce their new game, Grave Busters. They go further to explain how the game will operate with players being grave robbers and their financial strength making them strong as players in the game. What is most intriguing about the game is the fact that players who register for the game will get a special console for the game called Seabay for free. As the day breaks and Sujin goes to bed, he gleefully reminisces on his time with Ray in the game. He's a certified lover boy. 
The day finally arrived for the game, Dungeon Century to be discontinued, and you can imagine how Sujin would feel about it. He is down in the dumps as he thinks to himself that all the adventures with Rei will be over at the stroke of midnight. In the game, as they are celebrating its grand finale, Rei, away from the festivities, is waiting for Gwen. In GGTC, Yuki watches the game as the players of the Dungeon Century celebrate its grand finale. As he watches on, his secretary calls him asking him about his plans to go home, but he tells her of his intention to stay behind. He also goes further to dismiss her to home telling her not to worry about him. As the call disconnects, he turns his chair and hopes that a player can find the evening song flower before the game ends. In school, we see Sweden hurrying to his usual spot to set up his game to play before midnight. As he rides his bicycle furiously, he misses his leg with his bicycle and falls off the road landing into a bush. After waiting in the pub for Gwyn, Ray gets up from the bar stool and leaves a message for a hymn with a bartender. The nights get rough as things start going sideways. In GGTC, there is a breach of the facility as an assassin makes her way to Yuki. In the game world, there's been an attack on the parade as a monster taking the form of a woman had invaded it. While Suigen still tries to get to the lamppost to plug in his game for the night. As Ray is in the field, picking up flowers, she sees all the characters running from something. Confused by what is going on, she calls out to them asking what is wrong as she does this she sees tentacles taking them one by one and stripping them of their developments in the game. Back at the office, Yuki refuses to cooperate with the assassin and this cost him his life as she shoots his forehead killing him. In the game, the monster starts attacking Rei and Rei doesn't plan on going down so easily so she fights back. Finally, Gwyn gets in the game. As Gwyn enters the game he sees the fire that has consumed the parade. So he goes to the already destroyed pub where he sees the dying bartender who relays Ray's last messages to him. She left a message telling him that she was going to look for the evening song flower since he was busy. She also shared her hopes of him coming soon. On hearing this, Gwyn runs to find her and as he does, he sees that she's been stripped of her powers and all she has is a flower she held on to. As she wakes up and sees him, she thanks him for all the times he saved her and apologizes that she couldn't find the evening song flower. Moved by all this, Gwyn is moved to tears and as he cries, his tears drop on the flower turning it into the evening song flower. As the flower transformed, they looked on in shock and as they came to it, the monster grabbed Rey from Gwyn with her tentacles. The two then got separated with Rey moving towards the monster and Gwyn holding the evening song flower, falling towards the ground. As Gwyn falls he still tries to reach for Rey, but the asterisk 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 uses its tentacles and pierces Rey in the stomach, killing her. And that is how the game came to an end because it was midnight. With the bell ringing to announce the midnight and the game reading its vote of thanks to its players, the surgeon's pad falls off from his hand and dangles with its wire. In the early hours of the morning, Sujin sluggishly makes his way to the male dorms with his creaking bicycle he pushes and Wankoi runs ahead. As they walk he sees someone leaning in a tree that has taken Wankoi. Looking closely he is shocked as he sees Riku Ri. After the customary hello and hi, he keeps on pushing his bicycle. He stops when he hears her talking about him helping her in the game. She then goes on to ask for his permission to properly thank him for helping her in the game. He instantly refuses as he believes he is undeserving of such this is because he was unable to help me in the most crucial time of the game. While he keeps on with his self-guilt, she puts Wankoi on his shoulder and asks him if he will save her this time in the new game. On hearing of this, his face quickly lights up as he says, of course. Seeing he has pulled off the hand of his bicycle in excitement, he then begins to spiral into how he to get to work, while Rie the other hand laughs as she watches him. Later on, we see the police surrounding GGTC, and as we hear from the walkie-talkie, they've been unable to find any suspects and are still carrying out their investigation. In school, we see Sweden running at very high speed as he's heard the news about Rhee's dad from Rancho who showed in the news. After he finally makes it to the girl's dormitory, he sees her roommate, Maki who tells him that Rhee had gone out to make funeral arrangements. She also tells him that Rhee mentioned she won't be back for a while. Disappointed and tired, he sits on the stairs leading to the dorm to catch his breath. At the funeral venue, some people prepare the place and others gossip about Rhee's father and his debts. Amidst this we also see Ri who is sitting quietly in the front row of seats quietly and shakingly clutching to her father's picture. In the library alone, Sweden streams the burial ceremony, and as his colleague gives the speech of the burial ceremony of how great Riku Yuki was and his bid to catch the perp, we see the assassin standing behind the pillar at the stage. As Sujin keeps looking at Yuki's picture displayed on the screen, a memory of him and Yuki walking side by side flashes in his mind. Later on, Ri invites Sujin to the house. 
As she apologizes for her loss, she thanks him and tells him that she's fine. Unwrapping the box we mentioned earlier, she adds that there's something she's like him to have. She then goes on to give him the box, which has a letter that has his name written on it. Surprised by this, he picks up the letter and opens it up to read its content revealing Yuki's intentions of the letter given strictly to Suijin. As he lifts the lid of the box up, he sees a sea bay inside. Like some of you are thinking, why would he want him to have it? Well, that's also what Suijin thinks as he lifts up the console from the its position in the box. As he touches the screen of the console, the user identification system starts. The console analyzes his fingerprints, his retina, and even his DNA. Talk about thoroughness. After this process is completed, it goes to identify him as Riku Suijin. Trust me, you're not the only one surprised, as both Ri and Suijin are also shocked by what just happened. Suijin goes on to ask Rei why her father wanted him to have this package. This is when she tells him that she's not her father's biological daughter. While Suijin's shocked by this revelation, she goes on to tell him that she doesn't remember what happened, but her father had taken her when she was very small. She then apologizes to Suijin for bringing up such a weird conversation, but of course Suijin doesn't mind. As they conclude their discussion, a maid comes and knocks on the door, telling Ri that she has a guest downstairs. So Ri gets up and excuses herself to see the guest, leaving Suijin in the room. While Suijin remains in the room waiting for his console to fully start up, Ri goes downstairs to see two strange-looking men. After waiting for some time, the console initializes and welcomes Suijin to Gravebusters. It also shows him his total stored wealth in the game. As Suijin looks at the money update, he sees zero at the beginning, but as he watches on, the numbers just keeps on adding. This goes on till it becomes 10 billion yen. Like this shock wasn't enough, after his wealth saved an audio by Yuki starts playing. As the audio message starts, Reiku Yuki introduces him as the man who raised Reiku Ri and and as Suijin's grandfather. Meanwhile, in GGTC, we see the man who gave the speech on Yuki's burial walking with the woman who is Yuki's killer. She then tells him that Yuki didn't reveal any information to her before she killed him. She's soon cut off by a man who tells him that all of Yuki's assets have been seized and to make things worse, they created fake debts, which they sent to collectors to no collect. This strange man goes on to boast saying that all they did is the fate of those who go against their master, Dark Tiger. Back to Suijin still playing the audio, we see that Yuki left the money of Sujin and Ri to live happily ever after. Hula. Of course, Suijin starts thinking of their marriage and walks on the beach and starts blushing. While he keeps on fantasizing about the thought, the Yuki calls him back to reality when he continues talking. He tells Suijin that he and Rika Ri are not related and that her true parents were killed by the enemy. Yuki continues by telling Suijin that him and her parents were comrades but were eliminated leaving Rei behind. So he took her in and raised her while protecting her from the enemy. While Suijin listened to this revelation, he hears Rei shouting at the two men to let her go. Seeing this, he quickly rushes downstairs to her aid. As the men put Rei into their vehicle, they are stopped by Suijin who while panting, shoots at the men to leave her. With his stance you might think that he is ready to kick ass but he wasn't. As he ran towards them, he soon met by the boot of one of the men which sends Suijin flying. Like that wasn't bad enough, the man then walks to Suijin and continually kicks him in. The students then look on in horror. Things then get so bad that Ri agrees to go with them just for the one-sided beatdown to stop. The other guy then tells his partner to leave, and the guy agrees. As he walks away, Suijin then holds onto his leg, telling him to wait. Why do you Anon characters do this? Well, unlike the others who do this to fight, Suijin held his leg to offer to pay the debt. In disbelief, they agree. So Suijin dashes upstairs to get his console so he could make the transfer. But to his utmost disappointment, the console tells him that in-game money cannot be converted to real money. So what was the point of the money then? In vexation of being too powerless, Suijin then flings the console away. While he contemplates his uselessness, he hears Ray call to him, and as he looks out the window, he sees the vehicle driving away with Ray inside thanking him for saving her. Not wanting to give up without a fight, he has an idea. As they drive away, thinking they had shown Suijin a lesson, they soon see him riding towards them furiously. I'm sure this was not the idea you were expecting right. Well, he keeps on paddling till he gets close to the vehicle ad to make things hotter, Ri then winds down her window and starts reaching towards him. Just as their hands are about to touch, the driver then pumps his brakes making Suijin to be in front of the car. Increasing the speed once more, Tai driver starts pressing his horn at Suijin, causing him to lose his balance and his bicycle falling on a highway. While they pondered on where Suijin died or not, a man suddenly appeared in the vehicle. 
The man goes on to introduce himself as Silicon. Soon Suijin catches up to the vehicle on foot, but this time the car is tumbled and the man who took Rai laid on the ground. Looking up he sees Silicon holding Rei who is now unconscious. As he asks Silicon what he did to Rei, he tells Suijin that he has a message from Tenujin sama saying he is waiting for him in Gravebusters. After relating this message, Silicon disappears with Ri, and then the car explodes. What an epic exit. Later that evening, Suigen goes back to try his console, but it isn't working, soon he just gives up and lies down. As lay down, thinking of all that happened that day, starting with Riku Yuki being his grandfather and Silicon taking Ri, a light shines on the screen of his seabay. Soon, a heavily busted green-haired girl comes on top of Suigen, leaving him in shock. He then asks her who she is and she promptly introduces herself to him as Twin Star. She then goes on to call him her master and that the reason she is there is because he summoned her. Still in disbelief, she calls out his id name and as he believes her, they enter the game. Entering the game, Sujin falls onto a desert-looking place. As he looks around he sees her lying on the ground with her eyes spinning and suddenly, she transforms into two small creatures. At a different location in this same stage, we see three other people enter into the game and they seem like experts. Back to Suijin, as he ponders on the twin stars, a creature from the game then awakens from the sand telling Suijin to not awaken him. Well with this, we've come to the end of our video guys. Will Suijin survive this creature and meet those other players that just entered the game? Will he meet Temujin and save Rukiri? Or will he meet the Dark Tiger first? Well. This will be explained in the second part of this video, but for this to happen we need you to kindly like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you and see you next time.